Hi everyone, um, I am delighted to be talking to the lovely Sue Penner today and we were actually having a conversation yesterday and felt it was important to share it with everybody. Um, Sue, I think it would be a really good point for you to introduce yourself um, so everybody know who, knows who you are. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I'm Sue Penner. I'm the um, Chief Creative Officer at Rockpool, um, which is a bit of a funny title. Um, basically, I, uh, Rockpool is a training agency around domestic and sexual violence and trauma, um, and my background's in adult mental health, and I write the programmes and the training. So that's me, Jennifer, thank you. And obviously fantastic, and I'm sure everybody already knows my feelings on Rockpool and what <laughs> Sue has done for me, so thank you, and honoured to have you here, really. And we were talking yesterday... Um, about obviously the recent stats, about the current situation with the coronavirus and the sort of pressure cooker situation that couples will be in. Um, normal couple, like I don't want to say normal, but usual couples at the moment and um, those that are in an abusive relationship. And we we're just looking at the statistics and obviously Refuge have said that their calls have gone up by 25%. Um, over the last two weeks, West Midlands Police have arrested 400 domestic abuse suspects. And we were talking about, really, what can we do, weren't we? Maybe as neighbours. Yeah. And what, what we were talking about, really, was that it's really, really important at the moment that everybody gets involved in this, that with limited access for a lot of women to support lines because they are mm. going to be more isolated and being they're going to be being monitored more closely if they're at home with their perpetrator then actually it's about all of us taking some responsibility for this and trying to think about how we could maybe just give a couple of pointers won't we Jennifer about what mm. what might indicate that there was not necessarily but might indicate that there is controlling and coercive behavior going in in the house and we know um, from Evan Stark work where there's where there's control and coercion there's increased risk of serious harm in that family so that was sort of where our conversation led us yeah and I mean we, it was quite a good conversation really because we were analyzing you know what what could we see maybe as a neighbor we were talking about um, our healthy relationships so uh, the relations that were were we're birthing right now I was trying to talk about what I experienced in an abusive relationship and try and put myself in back into that situation and how would things be different? What would things be looking like right now? And I suppose we were sort of pulling it apart really because we obviously felt that it was important to sort of look at, analyse the relationships and work out what could we look for um, as neighbours, as maybe passing, you know, people, those in the community that we are still able to see and hear. So um, I think we, it was a really in-depth discussion towards the end and it really got me thinking and I went away continuing to think about it. I don't know if you felt like that, Sue, but um, one, one of the things for me was, well, what were my arguments like in that relationship? And what are my arguments with my husband <laughs> like now? Because it's natural that we will be having arguments right now in this situation, won't it? Because let's face it, it's unusual. It's I, yeah. I mean, I think I think that um, I think even the most even the healthiest of relationships are going to be uh, stretched at this point in time. Um, and one of the things we were talking about. I was saying to you, Jennifer, I'm really lucky. I don't have any small children at home. Mm. I live somewhere where it's really easy to walk out my house and be walking beside the beach. Um, so, so we've got lots of outlets. Um, but, but it's still, and, and even though we are used to working at home together, there are certain coping strategies for dealing with our stress that have been removed from us. So, mm. um, my part, my husband's coping strategy is he like he likes to play tennis, competitive tennis, and exercise. Um, and go to the gym and both those things are not an option at the moment so he's having to find alternative ways of dealing with this sort of energy and his you know his, his, his sort of pent-up energy but you know most families it, it, suddenly the pressure is hugely on to be you know school teacher and cook and do all the things that we wouldn't normally do so I would expect 
there to be increased tensions within families and that might result in people shouting at each other a bit you know kids screaming yeah and we and that was that was why it was important to have that conversation in terms of what would the difference between the normal tension the normal arguments that we're that we're bound to have and an argument or a situation that an abusive you know um, situation is happening in a household so we were trying to come you know we sort of passed ideas didn't we and talked about gave different examples and I, I was saying that in with my husband now if we have an argument we sort of separate in the house for maybe half an hour come back say sorry in front of the kids if, it's, if we've had a, an argument in front of the kids to show that forgiveness mm. and we get on as usual um, mm. obviously I think Sue you were saying it maybe a bit longer than half an hour <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure that we managed to resolve things in half an hour. But what? But also, what came out of that conversation was I, I live in a terraced house, so I have neighbours on each side of me, and was thinking about what I hear now that maybe mm. I wouldn't have heard before. So uh, they're not there at the moment, but I know that when one of my neighbours has their grandchildren to stay, there's I hear children running up and down the stairs, which mm-hmm. is fine. But but so if I was living next door to a family at the moment. And they were at home with the children. I would be expecting to hear noise that I didn't normally hear because the kids were at school all day. On the other side of me, I've got some professional rugby players, and they can certainly make a lot of noise. But I think they're <laughs> fine. I, I don't quite sure what they're doing in there, but I think they're fine. So I think out of our conversation, what what struck me was that actually, if you live next door to a family mm. and you don't hear anything, if you don't hear a change now that the kids are off school and everybody's in the house, that would concern me mm. because you'd expect there to be, you know, some raised raised voices in terms of people shouting from one room to another or kids running up and down the stairs. Mm-hmm. If you live next door to a family and they're shut indoors and not in their garden and you're not hearing them, that would make me a bit nervous about what was going on in that family. Mm. And, and also the, the sort of type of argument that you would have so obviously we've spoken about our arguments with our our own husbands and you know what that might look like um it being quite equal you were saying which was very interesting you know trying to dissect an argument and what you're hearing through those walls yeah. um and i think you were talking about how it obviously in an abusive relationship there's not going to be that equality within an argument no i i mean what 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 you know it, what happens in the arguments that, that in a in a healthy relationship is that, um, although of course you know with all the best will in the world you try to avoid raising your voice. Um, personally speaking, that happens. My, my husband and I can be quite loud, um, but there's a there's an equality in the in the pitch of it as it goes up. It goes up both of us. Mm. Um, I think what what you would be mindful of in a family where there's a, abuse or violence is that you're only going to hear one voice shouting. Mm. because the children and the non-abusive person are silenced and frightened mm. so if you if you just hear one person again it could be an indicator that someone's being controlled or hurt in that family mm. and it's almost like we also talked about the responsibility how the responsibility may be on the female to ring up a support line um but actually this you know, having these observations and us making those observations as neighbours, that gives us a bit of that responsibility and yeah. and care for those pe- you know, people that are maybe in that situation. And yeah. maybe if we're aware of these things that could potentially, you know, as flags, you know, that could help that person out of that yeah. situation, um, hopefully. Um, so we obviously spoke about um, the arguments being one-sided, unnaturally quiet and I also think that that quietness after an argument so obviously we talked about Mm. healthy relationships you come back together and normal level of noise probably resumes but if you've got that unnatural quiet after and that one-sided argument for maybe even days depending um I obviously mentioned that when I was um, in that relationship there were times where we would have that argument and we would go I'd get weeks of silent treatment and I'd have to and you would be able to tell perhaps as a neighbor that things are unusually different 
Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think the I think also the most obvious thing is is that if you know is that you may see someone in the garden doing something with an injury and mm. you, you need to not be a bystander if you see that you need to I mean one thing you can do is just ask are you okay um, which gives that person an opportunity to say of course they might be too frightened to say but I think we have a, a responsibility to report those those things that we can't just if it's harmless and it's you know hasn't been caused by somebody else, then that'll be fine. But I know that the police want us to contact them because they're relying. We're we're providing the intelligence, the intel. Really, mm. the community is the the people that are providing the intel at the moment to save lives. Yeah, and um, yeah. So we're t- yeah, seeing injuries, um, and we also sort of covered not being able to see that person. Yeah. So on one hand, seeing somebody maybe in distress or having a physical injury, and then on the other side, them not actually coming out of the house at all because we're not in a situation where we're not allowed out the house completely. You know, we are allowed to go into the back garden or to yeah. the shop. So have you seen that person um, come out of the house? Um, so I think that's maybe another, you know, thing to look at. Mm. So I guess to summarise, we've got four points there yeah um one have have things changed um have things you know heightened um number two are the arguments one-sided number three a thing is unnaturally quiet Mm. and number four what can you see injuries or do you see that person at all so I think it was really interesting to sort of have that conversation and dissect things. And I'm sure there'll be other things that we yeah. haven't picked up yeah. on that yeah. other people will be able to, you know, just take that time to observe and maybe yeah. witness and see. Um, so if anybody did have anything, please do, you know, let us know. We could add it onto an article, a post or. You know. I think that would be really interesting because I think that there's, there's potentially out there a whole community of volunteers that are now going into people's houses to support them. And it would be really helpful maybe for those volunteers to know what mm. they should be looking for. And again, I, I was talking to, you know, to somebody the other week who was saying that, you know, even though there was clearly, they were clearly in distress in the house and shouting and there was the sound of furniture being upturned, nobody either side of mm. that person called the police. If you hear that, if you clearly hear sounds of a fight, please, you know, dial 999. Mm. And also, if you're listening and perhaps you're in that situation, you can call 999 and then press 55, you know, if you're not able to say anything. So I think that's important. Um, There's other national, you know, domestic abuse hotline out there. There's services across the UK that are still operating in different ways. Um, But, you know, urge to look on Google, just search for the local area or get in touch with somebody. Um, You know, it's don't live in fear. Um, It's not a nice situation to be in at all. You know, we it's it's just so difficult, isn't it? And for neighbours and friends and family to have that observing and to do maybe the right thing um, to help support that person that would make a difference and I guess what I just want to say if there is anybody out there listening that's in that situation um whatever you're doing at the moment to survive it is fine Mm -hmm. whatever compromise you're making however much you're doing what your perpetrator wants to keep you and your children safe that's fine you mustn't be in a position where you are thinking that you should make changes in the home or make things different if you can't do it it's Mm -hmm. fine and when this is over Um, if you can't get out now when this is over there are services there that you'll be able to access yes definitely so important um, for all of that it's difficult a difficult time for everyone for services and for those that are living in those situations so thank you Sue for having that conversation with me (laughs) you're welcome (laughs) Um, um, if anybody wanted to find out more about Rockpool and what you do with your training programs where would they go uh, just go to our website, which is uh, www.rockpool.life. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And um, Abuse Talk is running, so you can join in. Hashtag Abuse Talk every Wednesday, 8 till 9 p.m. GMT. 
and um, we have people all over the world joining in so you might have to check your time zone um, but it's such important it's so important to continue the discussion to continue raising awareness especially at this time and to have those channels open so whether you even if you just talk to one of us um, on twitter sue's on twitter i am uh, it's making that first point of call isn't it yeah. so yeah thank you, Jennifer. thank you for asking thank you. you're always a delight and a privilege to do some work <laughs> with you so thank you no thank you <laughs>